Imagine if Taco Bell put this much care into any of their food products. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, I'm going to teach you how to make a breakfast food item. And I want to kind of set this up to explain to you that I felt inspiration for this dish much in the way that I imagine that the biblical prophets who were wandering the desert seeking direction from a higher power did sometimes gain that direction. And so too, I gained the direction that I need to teach you how to make a breakfast crunch wrap supreme. That's right, it is the beloved food item, perhaps a core tenet of the diet of any decent individual who lives in the United States. The Crunchwrap Supreme is a carbs sandwich with some miscellaneous bullshit layered between those layers. But you can also make it in the breakfast variety. We have taught you how to make regular crunch wraps in this video here, but I think it, I have to go over there because that's what John always tells me to do. So the video's over there, but I wish it was here. The breakfast crunch wrap does exist on the breakfast menu. Uh, I remember it was not too long ago that Taco Bell started producing breakfast. And the first time that I tried Taco Bell breakfast, I think was the only time, but I was really hungover and I was late for an appointment. I tried like a, a Taco Bell breakfast taco and it was fine. Pretty unremarkable. I don't really know what I expected. So the official version of this, as I understand it, although I have not had it, is a crunch wrap that has a hash brown bacon bits. Is it bacon? Who knows? Cheese and eggs. We will be making something somewhat similar, but our priorities will be different from that from Taco Bell in that we are not trying to minimize costs or maximize production efficiency. Rather, we are trying to put love into this dish. And so let's begin. I'll preface this with the Crunchwrap production process at home is uh, it is as critical to have your station in order in such the way that as if you were a minimum wage worker at a, a true Taco Bell. But the Taco Bell of your home or your hearth is also contingent on your ability to slap ingredients together quickly. So we'll start with the bacon. So here I have four strips of bacon. This is Wright brand bacon, which is a very high quality bacon. I have first cut it in half, and then I will cut it, we'll call that lengthwise, into thirds, because this is how I like to dice bacon. I will also comment that I just got my knives back today after they were professionally sharpened and therefore the risk to me of injuring myself is much higher than normal today. This knife just fell through that bacon without me pushing it. I was also quite pleased that the knife sharpener left a comment that I have nice knives. Thanks lady. So here I am dicing the bacon. Alright so over here in this pan we're gonna turn this pan on and we will start cooking the bacon. There's stuff in that pan because I previously cooked things in this pan. I did a little bit of prep work to save myself some of the tedium of producing multiple of these items. If you were a restaurant insider you would call that prep work. And if you were a home cook, you would also call that prep work. So I got bacon hands now. Here I am washing my hands with soap and hot water. I know this is content that frequently doesn't make it into the, the episode, but I just wanna, if I talk while I'm doing it, maybe it'll, maybe it'll show up. You have to say something important while you're doing it. Oh, 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 come back over here. I'll just wash my hands again. Hey everyone, we're having a baby. <laughs> okay, now, if this was not movie magic mode, which it is, and if you did not participate uh, in prep work, you would now need to prepare a potato. Because we are going to, instead of using a corn tostada, which would be the conventional ingredient in a crunch wrap, we will use a hash brown. I recommend using russet potatoes for your hash browns. You peel them, and then you shred them, through like a box grater, but I did that ahead of time. And here, in fact, are the last few bits of that potato. I'm actually really glad that I worked ahead because I have prepared these eight hash browns and because of how slow I was moving or, or whatever, it took me like a an hour to do that. So uh, maybe just buy some hash browns, unless you're on the quest that I am, that, that prophetic man in the desert quest to make a good 
breakfast crunch wrap. And uh, the whole point of this will be to have a crispy hash brown. If you are making them ahead in a batch, you can put them on a wire rack such as I have here. And some of them are certainly crispier than others. So we will be kind of favoring those crispy hash browns. But don't worry, I will demonstrate how to cook a hash brown for you. Uh, that's why I saved some potato. But in my ideal world, which tonight, we do live in that ideal world because we're spending our evening making a bougie breakfast crunch wrap supreme. And I can't really think of a better way to spend a Tuesday night. We're going to cook this bacon off and then we're gonna fry that hash brown in that bacon grease. And you, those who know, no, that's gonna be good. All right, I am satisfied with the cook on my bacon. And I'm not actually sure how many of these beautiful crunch wraps I'll be making tonight, but I do think this will be a sufficient pile of bacon for our purposes today. So I'm trying to delicately remove this bacon from this pan while leaving most of the grease in there because if you want a depth of excellent flavor, we could cook that hash brown in this bacon grease and it'll taste pretty nice. Pretty nice indeed. Okay, so, bacon grease. Now it's time for potato. Now my potato, my shredded potato has been uh, hanging out in its own juice for a while. Oh God, it's a little pasty. This might not be the greatest hash brown of all time, but it will be the hash brown that we made for you. If you've got stress in your life, I recommend squeezing hash browns. That is a good way to relieve some stress. And you can see here I have transferred it to a dry-ish dry -ish dish towel that I've been drying potatoes with for a while. I find it to be beneficial to both squeeze and then press in a towel until you get a dry potato product. You might even consider floofing that potato a little bit and drying it some more. Now, like I was uh, talking about earlier, I did make some hash browns earlier. And for the size for the crunch wrap, approximately one third to one half of a cup of potato shreds I think would be appropriate. You really don't want to make the hash brown too big because if you do, it'll be hard to do the full for the crunch wrap. So we'll come over here to our grease, porky greasy pork, and we will just make one hash brown. This is a very, very simple hash brown. No binder, no nothing, literally just potato. And I just, you know, I made several of these today, so I, I've learned a thing or two about this style of hash brown. So one, a couple of things I think are beneficial to this are pressing on the hash brown, really get it in there, really make sure that potato knows that it needs to cook. And you can tidy it up a little bit on the edges when you got those squirrely bits. You can just lightly bring them in like that. And I'll also comment that typically these will cook better if they're near the edge of a pan rather than in the center. There's more heat there, and that's just, uh, that's just physics, because in a gas range such as this one, the fire is in a ring, and therefore, the part of the pan that is closest to the fire will be hotter. You can season these as you go. You know, a little salt, a little pep, and then you'll just cook it on each side until it's done. It, it, what's, uh, I think, fascinating already, just from that short cook time, this is already a holistic eunuch, uh, unit rather, and that's fine. Okay. All right, more, more mise en place. We've got our ubiquitous and necessary can of Rico's Gourmet Nacho Cheese. I don't actually know if they put that in the conventional crunch wrap, uh, breakfast crunch wrap rather, but I'm gonna put it in there for sure. We will also need to cook some eggs. So here are some eggs, we'll cook those. Sour cream, cheddar cheese. Now in a, a conventional crunch wrap there is lettuce and tomato, and I personally like to put onion in there as well. I think in the breakfast crunch wrap, we can skip it. I think that the, ad, the addition of vegetal would not actually be additive to the experience here. Rather, you might have a small breakfast salad on the side if you are feeling particularly malnourished, perhaps, and you needed more phytonutrients. So we'll be skipping that today. I may do some experiments of maybe putting a little bit of salsa in the crunch wrap, but this is mainly going to be a cream, egg, and cheese, and potato, and bacon, Crunch wrap. So no, don't, no, no vegetables here. No, don't worry about it. It's fine. So I'll go ahead and get those things ready. So here's my shredded cheese. We'll use cheddar today. That's what I have on hand. But you could, of course, you know, get real spicy with it and have four cheese Mexican blend. Uh, over here, this bad boy is cooking much quicker than the other ones did. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this. Now, if you're if you're nervous about uh, the amount of grease in here and worried about flipping, you can see you can tilt the whole pan get the grease away from you and flip it up top and then push it back down. 
that's just good safety right there. All right, let's make some eggs. I've got some uh, clarified butter here, also known as ghee. That makes for very delicious scrambled eggs. And we will start cracking eggs over here into our bowl. I am going to cook eight eggs, which might actually be too many for what we're doing. I have not made this before, so I don't know how many eggs I need. That's okay. Now here's a question, John, as editor and producer of this show. We're going to put nacho cheese and shredded cheese in this crunch wrap. However, do you think we should make these scrambled eggs cheesy scrambled eggs? In the spirit of excess, I would say yes. Done. That will also give us the opportunity to call these three cheese <laughs> breakfast crunch wraps. Uh, if I had cream, I would put them in the eggs, uh, but I don't at the moment, which is fine. All right, can't believe how fast this uh, hash brown's cooking, that's fine. So we'll get our eggs going, and in the spirit of excess, truly in the spirit of excess, we're gonna add cheese to those eggs. What kind of cheese, you ask? We're gonna put in deluxe American cheese. That's right, deluxe American cheese is the ultimate egg cheese. Pardon me while I class it up tonight as I make this incredible meal for you, viewer. We're gonna feel great after eating this. Okay, I put the cheese in the eggs. They do need to cook. In an ideal world, what you'll find is that when you add American processed cheese to eggs, it all kind of melts into one eggy, cheesy wonderland of incredible flavor. And so I will cook those eggs for some time. My hash brown's looking, it's looking good, actually. I actually think we got a really nice size on it, too. So I'll go ahead and turn the heat off there. And uh, it, I think we'll just, um, what will we do? I think that I will transfer this for now. I'll just put it over here on the cutting board. And I hate to say what we're about to do, but we're gonna fry that crunch wrap in the bacon grease as well. You know, I will also take this moment to comment that if you are indulging in excess, such as we are right now, you may only be able to eat like one of these things, and that's fine. You know, maybe, maybe one is the correct number. Look at that beautiful, vibrant color. That's what you get when you buy eggs from chickens that had a little bit of a dignified life. It's not all marketing, but it's at least somewhat marketing. So I'll, I'll go out on a limb right now and say this is probably too many eggs for our, our purpose today, but that's all right. And you can see particularly with that cheese, it's just melted away into the eggs. So I, I'm, I just turned off the heat, even though these are very wet eggs, because we're gonna cook them further in the actual crunch wrap. And that looks good to me. So I'm gonna spread these out just a little bit in the pan or they will hang out until we are ready for them. Which means it's time to assemble this bad boy. I kind of think this is probably too much bacon grease, but I also don't care. So we're just gonna roll with it. All right, let's, let's do this. You get a big tortilla, you place it down. Then you put your hat on your head because you're gonna apply cheese directly to the tortilla. Big spoonful of cheese and you spread it out in the middle. Now, we're using bacon today, but you could also use something like crumbled breakfast sausage. I think that would be quite nice. So just a, a little bit of bacon, but we'll call it a sprinkle. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go too ham with the bacon. I would go bacon with the bacon. All right, so take your beautiful hash brown and place it on top, like so. And then we apply sour cream directly to the hash brown. It is our functional tostada today. And then we add cheese to that, like so. Here's my flourish. And finally, we will add some eggs to that, that there tostada. Now the egg is probably the, the biggest of ingredients here. So I think that like just a spatula like that would be very appropriate today. And I am significantly concerned that we've overloaded our crunch wrap. Now, to normally when I make crunch wraps, I put a secondary tortilla on top to ensure that it's full. I would like to try one without doing that. So let's see if we can fold this into a closed crunch wrap following the folding patterns that were passed down for generations. And this one in particular is a pentagram. <laughs> this one, this one happens to be a pentagon. It should be a hexagon, but the pentagon is on and the paint is gone. Therefore, I'm rolling with this one. And into the grease it will go. Actually, it's sitting in the top where there is no grease. That's fine. And we will grill that 
until it's ready. And I think that's gonna be really good. I'm gonna start making another one while this one cooks. I believe according to the Taco Bell training videos that you cook a Crunchwrap 28 seconds per side or something like that. But at home it's a little bit different. So you might need to cook it a little bit longer. Let's make another one. All right, I'm putting some salsa in this one and I really should have put it under the eggs or something, but you know, I didn't. So here we go. This one has a bigger hash brown. So I'm hoping, oh yeah, we're getting we're getting some hexagon action here. That's that's what I was worried about, okay? Is that there's a hole here, but that's okay because why is that okay? Because if we just slap it in there, it'll work out. Oh, we got some good crisp action. That's what you want. You want that brownness. I just pressed egg into it so it doesn't look quite as nice. But yeah, we're cooking here. And if you want to go the route of like completely frying it, you can. But it should just be grilled, you know, griddled even. But I got I got high hopes for this. Well, we're third. We're almost there. I mean, basically, after I grill this side, we're gonna I'm gonna split this with John. We're gonna have uh, two and a half points with a pentagram each, and uh, we'll tell you what we think. But I, I know what I know what I'm gonna think. I know. The first one is done, and here it is in all its glory. Here's the other side. Look, look at that. This tastes good. <laughs> Let's do a little cross section. Show you what we're working with. Look at that. Eggs, cheese, potato, bacon. Tell you what, that looks pretty, pretty damn good to me. I'm a little worried to eat it because I think it's probably too hot to eat. So maybe we'll just. Maybe we'll just uh, let that sit there for a, a moment. We'll be back. All right, let's try this bad boy. It's definitely not furiously hot anymore. It's good, Steve. It is so cheesy. My hash brown could have been crisper. I'll say that. Like, it's lacking a little bit of crunch. But I, I suspect that the commercial product suffers from that as well. And that it's hard to keep a, a hash brown crispy, you know. With fire sauce, it's like, you know, it's, it's good. Our three cheese, I don't regret it, but it's really damn cheesy. <laughs> I will say that. Wow. Anyway, um... That tastes like it was inspired by the divine, such as I set up the episode with. And I feel like uh, if you have any self-respect, you'll just make this, you know. If you, if you, if you care about yourself and want to be happy, make a breakfast crunch wrap supreme. And that's our show today. I don't know what the f that was, but that's fine. We'll see you next time on PGC.